Okay, so I've got some uh, drawings here that I want to have now uh, with some annotation. And so first thing you should always look at when you're going to put annotation on in AutoCAD is setting up styles first. So the main problem I think people have is trying to draw text without knowing the style that they're using. So I'll start with a text style. And this is the easiest way to get to it. Don't worry about going to the annotate tab. You can get to it there, but I'm not going to show you how. I'm just going to say on the, on the home tab, on the annotation panel, you can go to the styles all from there. So you've got text styles, dimension styles, leader styles, and table styles. Have I told you what I think about tables in AutoCAD? Waste of time. Don't use them. Okay, so skip tables um, and, and just worry about the others. So here we've got text style next to the drop-down list that shows us all the styles that are there already. That button lets us make a new style and I'm going to click new and call it uh, note. Since I've already got notes. So I've made note and then I'll choose a font uh, for general notes. Let's just say you can use Romans. So So there's it there, Roman with an S, which is the simplest font, a uh, single line font, and then the height I'll set to 2.5, and then most importantly make sure additive is ticked. So I'll go set current, and then uh, you can see there it's now the current style, so I can close it. And when I go to draw text, it'll use that style. But before you draw text in uh, the model tab, really important whenever you're using the annotative option that you also know the scale that text is going to be printed. So down here you can see I've only got a few styles, a few um, dimension or a few scales. So clicking on that little down arrow next to the scale, you can go to custom to add new styles if you need to. And if you've got a drawing from Revit, you'll have to do this. So also, if you see the old imperial scales, just delete them. You know what the imperial scales look like? Mm. When it's, yeah, when it's got a fraction or the apostrophes, which is inches, that, that means it's the imperial scale, which you will never need to use. So just delete those. And then here we've got, of course, 1 to 50. So I'm going to click Add, and then type in 1 colon 100, and then make the paper units still at 1 and then drawing it as 100. So 1 equals 100 and then OK and now I've got that scale as well. OK, so then going back to uh, this list, I'm going to choose just something different, I'm going to choose 1 to 100. And you can see then this text that was made earlier uh, is set up for different scales. I did that in advance. So I'll go back and change it to 1 to 15 and you'll see the size is changing. That won't happen for the text that you make at first unless you make some changes. But is that something that you would have seen before when you change the scale and the text? Yeah. Oh, if I go to there? Okay, that's good to see. So it's going to come up. But that's because of the way I've set it up. So, but where you might have seen this before... That won't happen unless you do a bit of setup. But what does what program does that for you? That you've all used? Revit. Okay, so in Revit, you don't have to set it up like this because it will automatically apply the scale of the view to your annotation, to your text and dimensions. Okay, so I've set it up to work like that, but I'm going to delete this one because yours won't come up like that. And I'm going to go in for text again, making sure I've got note as my current style. And then I'll use... I'm just going to start with multi-line text and then I'm going to click two points to make a rectangle which is our paragraph basically and then make sure you get into the habit of looking on the ribbon to see uh, what settings it's using because you can easily have a style like I've got here in note that then has the height changed you can change the height on the fly so the other problem people have when they're making text is not realising that the height here isn't what they've set in the stop. So you can always check that. And uh, then I'm ready to go. So now when I type it, 
we'll be fairly certain that is uh, going to be the right size for that scale, for 1 to 100. So now I'll go to my viewport. Uh, so I'm going to the layout where I set a viewport up that's at 1 to 50 so that you can see what I wanted you to see, which is that the text isn't visible. So this will hopefully make it a bit clearer how annotative works and why it's actually a much better option than the previous method because the previous method involved you making a style for every scale. So that was already a lot of work but then going further you then had to make a layer for every scale as well and then hide the layers for the different scales because otherwise we would have the text for the 1 to 100 drawing showing up in our 1 to 50 viewport. So it was a lot of extra work doing it the old way. What the annotative option does for you is only shows annotation for the scale that it's been set up for. So notice how as soon as I change the scale here to 1 to 100, then I can see the text. So if you saw what I did last week, the problem was that the scale, it did say 1 to 50, but it actually wasn't 1 to 50. And that's why I was hiding the text uh, when I first made it. So, how do we make text come up for 1 to 50? Two options. You can either go into the model tab and then draw text uh, that way. So I'll just do multi-line text again. But before I do, sorry, I'll need to set the scale down here to 1 to 50. And then draw some text. And this is what I think a lot of people do. They just draw, and now this one shouldn't have changed. That's, sorry, I'm going to go back and fix that. Uh, coming up with some options that shouldn't be there. Okay, so that's normally uh, how it should be. When you change the scale, you don't expect your text to just change because you wouldn't have done what I've done. So that's how it was when I made it, set up for 1 to 100. So I'm going to make another bit of text using the same tool, multi-line text. Okay, so that's for 1 to 50. And that's quite standard, so you'll have notes for each different scale. And can you see why that's actually a good thing? Because it means you can control where it goes at each scale. In some ways that's better than Revit. So now, if I go to this tab, you can see I've got one lot of text that shows up in the 1 to 50 viewport, and then the other one is uh, 1 to 100. And so then it's exactly the same for dimensions. Um, so dimensions, I'll just go through the style setup, and here you might just go and uh, refer to the video to get all the steps, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So here I'll click on the down arrow again to get my dimension style option. People often are afraid to set up their own dimension styles, but it's actually really easy once you've done it a few times and you know what all the settings mean. So here, it doesn't matter which style I start with, I'm just going to click new, and it's going to have a new style based on the one that was selected, but again that doesn't matter. So I'm going to call it Div. Uh, and I'll tick Annotative while I'm at it. Hit Continue. And I'm going to go through all the settings, starting with primary units. Here, precision is the number of decimal places it displays. You don't need to give builders <coughs> uh, fractions of a millimetre. Or would you? Would you ever want to give a measurement like you know, 20.2 millimetres? Mm. No, of course not. They're not going to build that accurately. You're lucky if they build to the nearest mill. Uh, probably the nearest five mill, <coughs> if you like. And so, don't show them. Decimal places, always set precision to zero. Uh, rounding off, I think can actually be a good thing uh, to round off to the nearest five mil. So, you can do that. Um, but be aware that it will round off the measurements you see. So when you measure something, you might find that it's different to the measurement you get in your dimension. Um, and then for angles, though, I find that you actually do want to see some precision. So you want to see fractions of an angle. And have you all come across degrees, minutes and seconds before? Good, yeah. So if you haven't, just make sure you know what that means. And um, decimal degrees are used a little bit as well, but degrees, minutes and seconds... Um, really important for architectural drawings. And then precision, at least show minutes, if not seconds as well. <coughs> you don't need to show decimal uh, fractions of a, um, 
a second bow. So that should be enough. And so that's a good basic setup for your units. Don't worry about alternate units or tolerances, you can leave those. Uh, then going to fit, you don't really need to do much there, just make sure Anatrib is ticked. And then uh, you can change the option for um, text placement, whether you want it to be, uh, I normally have it over the dimension line with a leader, and that way you can adjust the leader afterwards. And then uh, sometimes you can adjust these options, but this one, either text or arrows actually is pretty good. Going to the text option, then this option here, or the text panel, sorry, this ISO standard option is actually pretty good. And then the text placement, you probably want it to be for vertical, above, and then horizontal. Um, it, it's actually fine to leave that on centered. And then view direction, again, that's fine left to right. Uh, and then the other really important thing here, though, is we set the text style. This is what helps having a bit of an idea about how text works. I'm going to click on the browse button there. Uh, I'll click new and make a style just for dimensions. And I'll set the same font I used for my notes. Um, just going past it. So Romans. And the secret here is to not set a text, style, a text height in the text style. Just for dimensions. Don't even set annotative. Just leave it with annotative turned off and the height set to zero. That's the secret, just for dimensions. Okay, you'll see why in a second. So I'm just going to close this now. I don't even need to hit apply, just close. And then it'll ask you if you want to save changes and we can say yes. And then I'll choose dim from my list. So the reason that you don't set a, a height in the text style is that you do it here. So you set your text height in the dimension style. And it works much better. Okay, so now you can see it's all coming together a little bit better in the preview, but the problem is that my arrowheads are too small and uh, they're not the right ones either. So I want the um, architectural ticks or oblique. Oblique is just a thinner version of that, but you can't see it yet because it's too small. So I'm going to make the size, well I'll start on one just so you can see how big that is. That's generally a bit small as well, so I normally do around two. Uh, and that tends to be about the right size. The centre mark you can set here as well, not that you really need to use centre marks all that much, but uh, you can make that two or so as well. Uh, and you can, you can see it. You should be able to see in the preview there the things that you need uh, at the right size once you get these settings um, set up. So. Oh yeah, for the yeah for the leaders, yeah, well so you can set the leader here, but because Which ones? The yeah, and see, yeah, you, that's right. You can set the leader arrow here, but when you make leaders, when you use leaders, they use a leader style. So this doesn't get used. Yeah, it's an old thing. They've just left it there, but this, it, this, uh, the leaders don't actually use this leader option. Yeah, it's in the other style. So anyway, you can set it if you want to. And yeah, like I was saying, right, the other arrow is better. The open, uh, this one here, right angle, that's pretty standard. Okay, so then, this is the one that causes the most confusion, but if you've done all the other ones first, then this is actually quite easy. And you can see then how the preview uh, shows things is going to be uh, the way it's going to come up in your drawing. So these two, baseline, well, so extend beyond ticks is a good one. So I'm going to make that one. And you can see here how this line comes out. So notice this panel is called dimension lines. So do you know what the dimension line is? Yeah, yeah, you pretty much, yeah, yeah. Generally, it will be horizontal, so that's right. Yeah, you're pretty much right. So this line here, the one that's under the number or next to the number there, that's your dimension line. So that's good if you know that. And then um, increasing the extend beyond ticks to make that line come out further beyond the tick. But if you don't have that option, extend beyond ticks, it's because you haven't chosen a tick option back here. If it's on an arrow, then you don't have that option. To show you. So if I choose one of the arrow options, right, then now that option's grayed out. Okay, so I'll go back to one of the ticks. Ticks, if you're wondering why they use ticks, ticks started out as arrows. 
Um, so they were arrows originally, but then you know architects changed that uh, just because it's easier to draw them. And so two mil is probably a bit too much. One or one point five, it's more of a graphical thing for you, but one's probably okay. Uh, yeah. So then baseline spacing, that's another old one. It does come up a little bit, but you don't really need to worry about that very much. And uh, but I'd probably set that to at least uh, around three to allow for our text. Um, but uh, again, that one doesn't get used as much anymore. So then you've got the extension line settings. So what's the extension line? Exactly, the other lines, the vertical lines, in this case, if it's a horizontal dimension. So these lines here that connect to the dimension line. So extend beyond ticks there. I'm going to make one as well. And there you can so see we've got these little lines that stick out. And have you been told when you're drawing how you should connect your lines? What's better, to come just short of the corner or to go past it? Exactly, go past it, that's the key. Yeah. So that's what we're doing here. We're taking the lines past where they connect. And so then, offset from origin. This is a great one. You often will need to adjust it, but if I set it to three, you're gonna see then how it works. It brings back the extension line from the point that you click. So that's a great thing. But then there's another one that kind of does the same thing but measured the other way fixed length extension lines. So what that will do is set the extension line to always be a, a neat, even length measured from the dimension line. And you can have them both working together. So I'm going to set that to, sometimes about 10 is good, but it really varies uh, depending on um, the way your drawing is. But I'll start with 10 and then I'll show you when I draw it. So that's it. So that's going to work for everything, that one dimension style. So I've done it, it's called dim, it's current, so I'll close this and draw some dimensions. And if you've set that properly, it's easy to draw dimensions. The main issue with dimensions is that people can't see them because their style isn't set up properly. But then I'll tell you when you go to draw dimensions, don't fall into the bad ha habit of using this one just because it's a big button. Everyone goes to this and thinks, oh that's great, I can just use that for everything. And it does do everything. The problem is, it decides which dimension tool to use, yeah. right? And you don't want it to decide for you, you want to tell it. And normally this is the one you want to use, linear. Most, 90%, 95% of your dimensions should be linear. So just use that one, it's much easier. Oh yeah, well if you've got things that are at an angle, so if you've got angled walls, you can use a line, but there's a reason that you wouldn't no normally try and do that, and I'll show you. So if you've got a wall that's at an angle, okay, I'll change it to the walls layer so it looks like the other walls. Oops. Okay, so I've got an angled wall. <coughs> you can, you can. But would you tell a builder to build it that way? No, Exactly, yeah, that's right, exactly. Think about the planes. Uh, or the orthogonal direction, uh, dimensions, and that's the right idea. Yep. So if I dimension with linear, I can dimension from this corner of the wall to the other corner and have a horizontal measurement, and then I can do linear again and give another measurement that's vertical. That gives the builder everything they need to get from this point to this point. If we do it the other way, a lot of people do it first, which is wrong, um, using a line, Right, you might think that's great because we can tell them how long the wall is and it doesn't hurt to give them that. You should do that too. But then where people get it wrong, I think, is they use Angular to then tell them what angle the wall should be. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I can definitely do that. But how easy is it for a builder to set out an angle like this? <laughs> it's not that easy. So they prefer it to be like this with two measurements, a vertical and a horizontal, and then they can work out that angle. It's not necessary, no, but you should, it's good practice to give it to them. So you still should know how to do an aligned dimension. That's definitely good. Mm -hmm. But what you don't need is the mm -hmm. angle. Yeah. Because a gradient is an angle, mm -hmm. and that's what we're giving with these two mm -hmm. measurements. That's mm -hmm. a gradient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yes, that's why I was saying linear dimensions should give you most of your dimensions. 
but you will occasionally, when you have angled walls and other things, think about using a line as well. Okay, so then putting that into practice on our drawing, if I go and draw with a linear dimension and then go from, uh, let's start with the outside and give an overall dimension. It's always hard with a um, unit like this where it's uh, only part plan, but we'll go to here. So that's the exterior dimension for the whole building. And then notice how when I'm close to the points that I've clicked, that extension line is getting shortened because it's using that offset from origin distance to keep it um, a certain distance from the point I clicked. But then when I come out beyond that distance, then the extension line, uh, what is it, maximum extension line setting, that other one, fixed length extension line, that comes into play. And that's actually more useful in a way because then it keeps all of your dimensions nice and neat with the same length extension lines. And you don't have to do what I see a lot of people doing, which is go and select every dimension and then shorten them manually using the grips there. Which you can do, but it takes forever. If you've got lots of dimensions, imagine, you know, doing this. Uh, and this is not even the CC drawing. You shouldn't be worried about this. This is nothing. Um, anyhow, so, uh, yeah, it is. It's fun. I, I love doing this sort of thing. And I'll show you, that's just up the road. In, in, if you want to have a look at it, it's in Newtown, the Vanguard. It's a nightclub up there, so you can go and look at it. Okay, so um, anyway, just to see some other dimensions, if I go back to linear and uh, put in another overall dimension here, yeah, just to the outside of the wall, and then you should work your way inwards. So I'll do another linear dimension now for the interior um, space there. Oh, yeah, I'll come back to the curve, yeah. But then what should go with this? So with this interior dimension, what should we have to fill it in, that row? What have I missed? So what do people want to know about this building when they're looking at the drawing? The thickness of the walls, absolutely. Okay, so with that row of dimensions, we can then put another one for the wall thickness that then connects it to that overall dimension. So, uh, yeah, you should, I think, with a building like this. Yeah, it's, it's not always necessary to put in dimensions for existing things, but mm -hmm. here, because you'd need to build things to follow what's existing, I think it's, it's good practice. Um, one of the things I do is offset the line width that I'm creating. Yeah. Um, so I do a rectangle around the offset, and I offset them so that my dimension gets to be something space. So yeah. Yeah, well, I'll show you. I'll, I'll um, put that in. I, I've done that before. Um, I'd, yeah, now I do it by eye usually. But yeah, it's definitely a good thing. So um, so let's call it uh, G... I've already got a non-plotting layer, but I'll make another one called G uh, no plot MPLT. And I'll make the colour different just so that it reads differently to the other things. And then here, if you haven't tried it before, this option you can set to non-printing for that layer. Okay, so now, like I was saying, lines work, but rectangles are really good because then they can go all around the drawing. Uh, so, in fact, what I might do here, though, is instead, because we're only going to do uh, on three sides, maybe, to start with, uh, a polyline is going to do something similar. So I draw a polyline going around with ortho on, connect it, get the tracking to work, there we are, and that'll do. Okay, so now, yep, okay, so I'll offset, uh, let's say 400. And that's going to offset all the way around because that's a connected polyline. <coughs> so I was saying we can just snap this dimension now using this grip to line up exactly with that dimension and then keep offsetting <coughs> to 
get more, so we probably have some in. In fact, I'd move, well, we'll see how we go for space, but uh, yeah, we can probably go put another row inside, maybe even two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it does matter, people, you know, definitely look at those things and uh, make sure everything's as neat as it can be. And uh, so now if I go and put in dimensions going the other way, so here uh, I'll just do the rooms. Oh, now so I wanted to show you, um, just to finish off, um, continue. So I'll put this dimension in and then the one problem with this uh, home tab is that there's no continue option there. <coughs> and so, for that one, it's easiest to go to annotate, and you'll see continues there. <coughs> so with continue, you just pick up from the previous dimension, and then you can just go along clicking points, a bit like Revit. I should just point out something here. Here I'm saying it's not a bad idea to dimension the existing walls because um, it'll just make it clearer for you and you'll do need to build things to those. But there is an old convention if it's a drawing for construction that you should never dimension existing unless you note it and say that's an existing dimension. And there's a really good reason for that. What do you think the builders look at to work out what they have to build? Exactly. Yeah. If something to, if something is to mention, it generally means that's new construction. Yeah. And also, yeah. yep, that's it. So if something is existing, it's already there. So they go on site and they measure the dimensions for the new things from those existing elements. And so you shouldn't have to dimension those. And, and also, it does create confusion if you dimension things that are existing because they'll think it's it's new. Um, your line weights and your hatch patterns should also indicate that. So here you can see we've still got solid hatch patterns in the walls, which would mean normally they're existing. So it's really important that you clear all of those things as well. And then what's the final thing that tells people? I just mentioned it, but I'll just see if you're listening. Um, what's the final thing that tells people something's new? Exactly line weight, that's right, yeah. So what line weight do you make your existing things? Other way, light. Yeah, existing should be light. The hatching, yeah, I know. It's if it's black, it's hard, but it still should be light. Yeah. And you can even take the hatching off sometimes to make it clearer and just have a really faint line for the existing things. But it is a real convention to have things um, hatched solid if they're existing. And uh, but then when they're new, you put a hatch pattern in for the material. Yep, so that's it. Yep. Sorry? Yes, that's right, because you were doing preliminary plans and now you're doing for construction, so you're going to take that hatching off and put in the hatching for the material. So, so I'm basically done, but I will just do one last thing to finish off. If I go to the layout tab now, I just want to show you, even though it can be really helpful to draw, especially dimensions, in model space, because then you know what you're measuring and more importantly, AutoCAD knows. Uh, which, in fact, I'll just delete that one, we don't need it. Um, which is the main problem when you dimension in paper space, which is what I know a lot of people are doing now, mostly people who didn't come through the old way. Um, and it works, that's why they do it. But you, you will often get technical issues. So if I draw a dimension here on the page, you'll see I can actually snap to a drawing in the viewport Make sure you realise I'm not in model space, I'm in paper space. So I'm drawing on the layout. And it's usually clever enough to work that out and get the right uh, scale or the right measurement. Um, so it does work, but there are issues with that. And you'll find uh, it's probably easier to do most of your dimensions in model space. If you're using the annotative option, it shouldn't matter either way. And same with text. So with text, uh, you can do a lot of it on the page. What I find is really um, frustrating though when you do a lot of that, you might go back and 
move something in model or you know want to copy a plan yeah that's right so the main issue is say you want to copy it and I'll do that all the time you'll often copy plans and you want all the text to go with the copy if it's on the layout it won't do that so just decide do it on the layout if you need to but make sure you can do it on uh, on model and you should be fine think about your layers but we'll come back to layers I haven't spent that much time on layers up until now, but we'll do a lot more on that moving forward. But hopefully that's going to give you a good set of steps that you can use to make text and dimensions work every time and get the right size. So if you miss the sizes, these are your standard sizes. Um, so I make a text style for each size. That should give you everything you need, I think. So. Oh yeah, the curve, yeah, good point, yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks. Okay, so yeah, if you want to dimension a curve like this, okay, so you want to definitely still use a linear dimension to locate the endpoints. So we're going to locate the, I'll just do one side, so the endpoint here to the endpoint here, and that goes to one side, and then another one going the other way. Okay, so that way they can locate the start and the end of the wall. And then all you then need is a radius. And that's it. Uh, oh, now one little setting, sorry, that I missed. Oh, I'm at it, I can't help it. If what, which came up? Oh, yeah, well, see, luckily my inventions are rounded off. It probably is not <laughs> 11.50, uh, but thankfully, yeah. Okay, so uh, here we go. So offset from din line, I missed that one. Okay, so that should be uh, probably maybe 0.5, something like that. Um, and just brings the text away from the line a little bit. So that should do it. Yeah. Oh, you mean the spacing between the dimensions? Yeah. Oh, look, there are no rules, but you could do what I've done for mil. Yeah. 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 And so, and that was four mil, that was at one to hundred, so it would be um, at one to fifty. Uh, it was eight, actually, so. Yeah, it's got to be eight. Sorry, my brain's not working. But yeah, eight mil, sorry. Eight mil. So, I'm not thinking. Oh, yeah, because you do. 1 to 50. Yeah, 8 mil. That's in model space. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you, in, yeah, if you're doing it in model space, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, let me know if there's anything else I've forgotten, but I think that should be plenty, the text and the notation. Tutorial.